the Holson Sewell syllabus at this belt rank is attacking joint. So the number one point I want to make right now is that the syllabus as it's presented isn't realistic for a real fight. What you're going to see is the practitioner standing across from a cooperative partner and the practitioner is reaching out, grabbing a, a hand, and then they're going to be performing one of the joint locks. The problem with that is in real life, fighting is so chaotic, it's going to be really hard to grab somebody's hand like that. But you will see those opportunities. You're going to be doing a block, or maybe they're grabbing a hold of you. Maybe they got your wrist. Whatever it is, you're going to notice an opportunity for one of these tools to come out. And that's really what this belt rank is, is adding more tools into the toolbox so you have more things applicable to different scenarios. So with that, as we get into practicing these, it's very handy to have a partner. If you are having a partner, trade off. You try the technique on them, let them do the technique on you. It's just as important for you to feel what the technique is like being done on you so that you can understand what you're doing to somebody else. If you don't have a partner to practice with, that's okay. You can imagine a partner in front of you. The toughest part about this belt rank is the coordination of the footwork and what you're doing with the hands. And you can pantomime that. Pantomiming it is going to teach you that coordination. It just won't teach you what it's like to uh, try it against a resisting opponent. So with that, let's take a look at our first grips. One of the things you're going to notice about this syllabus is that we're trying to control the person's right hand. Now, eventually you're going to want to learn this on the left hand as well, but majority of the people in the world are right-handed. So that's the hand that he's going to have the power in. That's the hand he's going to go for his weapon in. If I can control that hand, that gives me an advantage in the fight. These next three techniques, not only am I going to control his right hand, but I'm going to try to control his thumb as well. And that's what they say is the thumb, the ability to use tools, that's what separates us from animals, right? So I'm going to show you these hand grips that we're going to use for these next three techniques up close. So the first thing I want you to notice, if he puts his hand out here, this, this little curve he has on the back side of his thumb, that curve meets the curve that's in the middle of my palm. It almost fits together like a Lego piece. So the beginning of this technique, I'm reaching out and I'm trying to hit the center of my palm right on top of that thumb. Then the rest of my hand acts like a bear trap. My middle finger and my ring finger curl and they're going to go around his thumb, dig into the meat and try to find the bone of his thumb. I'm going to show you on the backside what my thumb's doing. My thumb is then going to find this bone that connects to his ring finger. Even better is if I can get it to slide right between the pinky finger and the ring finger. There's nerves in there and I can cause more pain compliance. The other thing I want to point out is my index finger. It's making what's called the fan technique. Fan technique is two things. It's the position of the thumb pushing and the index finger not just pointing out, but also pulling back to create tension. Once I have his thumb locked in and my thumb locked in, this finger is going to point around to the position that I want the joint lock to go. That's going to help me direct the power. Hup. Hup. Yes. The next technique is a basic outside wrist lock. This technique is used over and over again throughout all of the hop keto techniques. So your partner's going to reach their hand out so that you know which hand you're supposed to go for. It's just going to be a reminder. Just like the other techniques, I don't want to lean to grab it. So the very first thing I'm going to do is take a step. I'm basically trying to step directly underneath his hand. I don't want to get too close to his foot because I got to go this way and I don't want to trip over his feet. So I want to leave a little bit of space between his foot and my foot. As I do this, that step, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to grab on top of his thumb. Remember, my thumb's going for his ring finger while my index finger or my uh, middle finger and my ring finger are hooking onto his thumb bone. The second step, I'm going to bring this right foot into a tension stance and I'm going to present his hand as though I'm trying to show him a mirror. My other hand is then going to come up and join. I'm going to cross my thumbs, but they're basically making the same exact motion. Now his hand, I want to point out, he's doing what's called a live hand. 
The life hand isn't just opening the fingers, but it's extending the fingers and trying to make them grow. That's going to tense up all the tendons in the back of the hand of the wrist. It's going to give me something that I can push against for the joint lock without hurting his hand. So once I've got a hold with that second hand, my uh, third step is going to be stepping right next to his foot. My fingers, I'm going to keep pointing this way and I'm going to push him in front of me. Once I've pushed and I step, I'm now going to take the fingers and I'm going to point them right between my feet. Let's examine the applications of the third technique. So in this case, something's happened and the opponent's reached out. Maybe they've grabbing a hold of my jacket. This is a very common thing. They'll hold you here and try to keep you at arm's length while they try to pound you with that hand. They, uh, they're going to try to keep you off balance that way. It could be that he just reached out and grabbed me. Hopefully, I would block something like that. But odds are it came from something like this, and now he's got a hold of me here. So with the application of this first one, if he grabs me and he's pulling me that way, I don't want to resist him. He's going to rip my nice threads. I don't want him to rip my nice threads. So if he wants me to go that way, I'm going to cooperate, but I'm going to take something with it. Notice how I reached up and I grabbed this hand and I used his power to add to the joint lock. Now that you understand a little bit about the technique, it's time to practice it. So if you have a partner, you can go ahead and pause the video. You're going to try it on your partner. Remember to go nice and slow. Give them a chance to tap. That means they're feeling pain. And then let your partner try it on you. Do it a couple of times, like five times each. If you don't have a partner, it's still important. You can't just understand the technique here. The technique also has to live here. So you have to get your body to go through the movements, and I'm going to show you how to do that. We call it pantomiming the technique. I'm going to be imagining I've got an opponent in front of me. My opponent is exactly my height. He's exactly my weight. It's basically my imaginary twin. Let's practice the movements of technique number three. So starting from a ready stance, the very first step is a forward step and reaching around to grab their thumb. The second step is bringing that right foot to attention, and that's when I bring my right hand in as well. There's that theme again, the foot and the hand should happen at the same time. Then I'm gonna step forward to bring the energy back, and I'm gonna turn into a horse stance. I'm gonna point my finger between my feet. Let's try that a couple more times. Ready? Two, step and grab, come to attention, step and turn. Back to ready. Three, one, two, three, four, five, hit. This next technique you've seen in pretty much every Steven Seagal movie that's ever been made. Because it's a pretty effective technique, especially against somebody who's being very aggressive and they're pushing you or they're trying to stab you, we're going to be moving out of the way and using all their aggressive energy against him. So with this, the very beginning of it is almost exactly like technique number three, where I'm stepping forward and I'm grabbing on top of his thumb. The difference is, as I do my step forward for this one, I want to step right next to his foot. You'll notice I've got a little bit of distance right there. I don't want to be right on top of his foot. I'm going to be doing a spin, and if we're both wearing shoes, this can mess me up and throw me off balance. If I have my foot right next to his, that's going to give me plenty of position for my toes to go as I do my pivot. So I grab on top of the thumb, and I push down as I step next to his foot. That's going to make him want to lift his hand back up. As he does that, my second step, I come to attention. Now, you remember that arm bar you learned at Yellow Belt? I'm looking for that same position about an inch above his elbow. But at this point, I'm going to be using my rib cage. I take him, pin it with my elbow right up against my rib cage. Then I'm going to lift his pinky up to my shoulder. That puts the arm bar in, and you notice that what that did to his head. If you feel like you need to get a little bit more momentum, you can even step back with that right foot as you do it. That puts a little body weight in. What I'm looking for is him to take that step with that foot. 
He thinks he caught himself, and in fact, he's got a lot of power this way, but if I push him that way, he's going to fall over. That's the next direction of our lock. So I'm creating all of this momentum through his momentum. I'm stepping in, I'm grabbing his thumb, I'm using the arm bar to make him come around. From there, I just step in and I do tech number, technique number three and I point my fingers right between my feet. Let's take a look at the application for the fourth technique. I don't know what it is. I call it the monkey dance, but people like to get in your face and they like to try to dominate their power over you. They're not necessarily trying to hurt you, but they are trying to start a fight. And so in the first case, when he pushed me, he pushed me on his shoulder. I was able to turn and use that momentum. But what if they catch you square in the center of the chest? Well, if he catches me square in the center of the chest, I could turn and look. I, if I just kept turning, I'd get all the way around behind him but he gave me a present. I don't want to be rude and reject that present. I want to accept the present. So when he gives me that shove, I'm going to catch the present. I'm going to take it with me. And then the rest of the technique comes along with it. I just wait for him to pull his hand back. As soon as he pulls the hand back, I go with it. And take a look at that. We're right back at the technique number three. Let's practice the movements of techniques number four. The technique number four movements are almost identical to the ones we just did in number three. The entry is exactly the same. I'm stepping straight forward and I'm grabbing the thumb. Difference is the second step I'm bringing to attention, but I'm turning with it. I'm gonna turn with it and I'm gonna push my hand over to my shoulder. I want their arm coming underneath my armpit. From there, I'm gonna do one more step back and then I step forward and I turn to my horse stance, just like we did in the third technique. Let's try that a couple more times. Ready, step, pivot, turn, turn back, step forward, horse stance. Three. Technique number five, I'm going to use the same grab, but the footwork's going to be different. With techniques three and four, I was stepping my left foot over next to his right foot. With technique number five, I'm going to grab the same way, but my step is going to be my right foot stepping over next to his left foot. My second technique, I'm going to bring this hand up in front of my chest. I'm going to join it with the other hand. This is the key, is I want to keep it directly in front of my sternum. From there, I'm gonna take my left foot, I'm gonna bring it into a tension and I turn 90 degrees. From there, I'm gonna keep my right foot where it's at, I'm gonna keep this hand locked in. My second step is gonna be drawing my foot back to face another 90 degrees. Then I just point down between my toes. Let's take a look at the practical application of the fifth technique. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice in common with all five of these, I'm not fighting my opponent's energy. My opponent's giving me energy and I'm just adding a little bit to that energy. So we're gonna go back to this guy grabbing me. Now, the first time when he grabbed me, he pulled me this way. Now he's gonna pull me that way. But I wanna show you something about this. If you look at the way he's got me grabbed, if I grab on top of his fingers and I've got that joint lock, he can't let go of my uniform anymore, which makes it a lot harder for him to get out of the joint lock. And look, this is where I want my joint lock to start at anyway. It's right at my point of power in the center of my chest. So in this case, he's grabbing me. He's pulling me that way. I'm going to move right along with him. And then I'm just going to take his hand the rest of the way. And I'm going to try to put it down onto the ground. He's going to mop the floor with me. You'll learn mop the floor. Let's practice the movements for technique number five. 
Now we're gonna be working with the opposite coordination of moving the right foot with the left hand. This can get kind of weird, which is why this pantomiming training is so important so you can get your coordination down. So I'm stepping towards my opponent's foot. My left hand is gonna be grabbing on top of their thumb. My next technique is turning 90 degrees while my other foot comes to attention. Here's that coordination again. As soon as my foot arrives, my other hand's gonna grab same time. Then I'm gonna hold my hand in front of my chest. I don't want it coming over to my shoulder and moving around. I want it to be strong right here. Do that extra 90 degree turn, and then I'm gonna step into a horse stance and push my hands between my feet. Let's try that a couple more times. Ready? Two, right foot, left hand. Come to attention and grab. Stepping out to the horse stance, point between the feet. Back to ready stance. Three, one, two, three, four, The last two techniques, we're gonna be grabbing with both hands. So I wanna show you how this grip works. I'm gonna be making an X with my first finger and thumb, and that X is gonna be my bear trap. If he holds his hand up here, I slap the back of his hand, and that's gonna wrap my fingers around his hand. It's gonna look almost like the same exact grip that we used for the uh, outside wrist lock, and almost like the same exact grip we used for the inside wrist lock. But in this case, I'm just grabbing down on top of his hand. For this first technique, I'm going to be moving off to my right hand side or over to his right hand shoulder. As we're standing here, uh, when I step in, I'm trying to step in in two directions. One is to close the distance this way so I can grab his hand. The other is off next to his left foot so that I can move off of the center line in case there's a punch that's going to be coming at me. I want to move both directions at the same time. So I get my hands like the, that signal. I step forward and I grab the hand and I'm going to push it over towards his left hip. Once I have it there, I'm going to use my other foot. I'm going to step in and lift his arm. Now, I want to be careful. We don't want to lift the arm too high. If I lift it too high, when I turn, he can turn, and now we're dancing. And you don't want to watch us dance. That's just creepy. So instead, the way this works out is when I do my second step, I need to bend my knees so I can keep his arm at shoulder level or a little bit lower. I'm going to duck underneath his arm like it's a bridge. Now notice my fingers are pointing straight up in the sky right now. As I step back with my other foot, I'm going to step back to stand next to him, and I'm going to point my fingers down right between my feet, and that's going to cause a different variation of the outside wrist lock. Let's take a look at the practical application of the ninth technique. This one will work just as well if somebody's trying to grab you and you just need to control that hand with two hands. But I'm gonna show you this from the aspect of this knife attack. The most common knife attack you're gonna run into, it's not this thing that you see in the horror movies all the time, it's what I call the sewing machine. And notice the motion of it, it goes in and it goes right back out again. What I need to do is stop it from hitting me and then follow it as it goes back. So as he does this first technique, notice how I'm stopping it right above it. As it goes back, I'm gonna take and move it over to the side. Now look at where I'm pointing the knife blade at. I don't have it near me. I don't wanna pull it back into me. I wanna keep it right out here as I do the technique. Common mistake is to pull the technique in close, even if he doesn't have a knife. Look, I just cut myself with it. Let's practice the movements of technique number nine. So I'm going now again to this grip with my thumbs crossed, my bat symbol. I'm using these three fingers to grab and my two finger guns, pew, pew, my live hand technique to create direction for my joint lock. So starting from my ready stance, I'm gonna be using my right foot to step to the right. I'm gonna step and grab a hold of their right hand. 
Step number two, I'm going to bring my feet to center as I step up to this walking stance. I'm going to lift their arm to just about the level of my shoulder. Step number three, I'm going to bring my right foot into a tension and duck underneath their arm. And then I'm going to step all the way back to a horse stance and point down between my feet. Let's practice that a couple more times. Starting from the ready stance, it's the right foot grabbing the hand. Step two, left foot's going into the walking stance, ducking underneath the arm, and stepping back to the horse stance. Three. One, two, three. Back to ready stance. Four. One, two, three. 